right, and welcome back once again. We're going to dive back into the green, green island of ficus here, but this is what a lot of my trees are. I got a hold of a lot of them very cheaply and everything, so there I go with that word cheap, ladies. Remember, I am very cheap. But anyway, um, this is the little sister of the tall one that I did just the other day. Uh, that tall one has a big sister, but I think I'm going to wait until I get a better camera and better editing equipment to uh, do a video on that one. It's in desperate need of a trim, but still, I think sometimes in in bonsai and in general, the, the best thing you can do is actually nothing. I think sometimes just let them grow as long as they're healthy, and it's very healthy out there. Can't see the trunk at all or anything, but anyway, this is the uh, this is the little one that came off of that. And uh, at the beginning of the last video, I rambled on a little bit about why I'm doing my my channel here and everything. And part of what I tried to mention was just uh, the information that's available on the internet. Internet, how much of it's in misinformation, how much how much of it's not very good information for where you live. And I do live in South Florida. But uh, one of the things I see, and I've actually seen it a lot on some very reputable bonsai sites, is that uh, ficus should be protected from direct sunlight. And uh, all of my trees sit out in direct sun sunlight as much as I can get it in. Uh, you can see here, though, that like this right here, that's actually sun scald. This is getting scalded just a little bit. But uh, if you live around here, you know what I mean. But uh, here it is, the end of May, beginning of June, and it hasn't rained for a couple months. We get very little cloud cover. It's actually supposed to rain this afternoon for the first time in a long time. And so this time of year, I actually do have quite a few of mine out there that are kind of getting scalded like that. But as soon as it starts raining, we get the we get the cloudy, rainy days and everything. Those things will really just sprout back up. And that's actually kind of leads me into what I'm talking about here. And that is, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about taper. This thing is <clears throat> really has none. As soon as I took this cutting, I actually saw a, a post about somebody's ficus, a couple of them actually, and they said, oh, all, all ficus cuttings wind up looking like that. They look like a cannon sitting in a, in a pot or whatever. And that's exactly what this thing looked like when it was young before, uh, you know, before it leafed out or whatever. And of course now when I cut it back, it's probably going to look like that again. But I mean, I guess, I don't know, find out too late. This is like when you trade in your car for $4,000 and then the next day somebody says, oh, I would have given you 10. Eh, sure you would have. <clears throat> but I am going to try to create a little bit of taper. The idea with taper is that you want a fat trunk and you want it to come out skinny on top. Here, I mean, you can see this flat spot here is where I had originally cut it that first day. I'm sure you can see that in the beginning pictures and everything. And it's growing really nicely up here. The other word for the day, I guess, would be apical. And apical is like that ficus trees are very apical where they grow up. And uh, then I got just these two little branches down here. Well, ficus kind of grow a lot off momentum, meaning that like if you were to prune this right here, it kind of lose some momentum and stop growing right there and focus this energy up here where it still has momentum where it's going. I'm going to try to do the opposite of that is I'm going to cut this way back up here and then get this to sprout back down here. Uh, real quick, one of the other things I've, I've heard on a lot with pruning is they say, you've got to count back six leaves and cut back on the sixth leaf or whatever. There's just no way I'm counting leaves or anything like that. I just prune, you know, where it needs it. You, uh, uh, when I go in, even right now, this one's growing straight off the top, but I kind of, I mean, I don't know, I almost should take that off, but I kind of want to leave it there just in in the hopes that it's just providing health to the tree and everything some of these are really in some awkward spots which just kind of happens with with ficus too this one here i don't know how well you can see it but it's very small and it's barely connected to the tree and that's exactly what i want to do is i want to cut way back up here and let the momentum kind of come out down here let these spread out a little bit maybe even get some aerial roots and stuff down in here when I first took the cutting and I put it in this decorative pot, I shouldn't have put it in the decorative pot right away, but I really didn't have a training pot like this. And I, what I, I want to start experimenting some with like leaving in a pot for several years and letting them get very root bound. I think that's how they actually get the aerial roots. People talk about that they should be in humidity and misting it and everything. I think that just being pot bound and neglected is actually what gives them the aerial roots more than anything. But so I'm going to cut way back on the top. I'm not going to do time lapse today or anything because, well, first off, that awful music. Does anybody have any uh, suggestions on 
on how to not just use the awful music provided by either YouTube or iMovie. So far I've been editing things with iMovie as I get my PC and learn some other editing software or whatever. Hopefully I can get something better, but again, don't really like don't really like that standard music that they make you do with time lapse stuff. I don't want it to be quiet. I already got with hit with a copyright. I tried to do a little voiceover with with some uh who was that? Oh, it was typo negative. And typo negative banned my video in four countries and everything. I had to silence it. You can now just see it's all silenced. I cut that one all the way off. Just, it was in a really awkward spot. Anyway, I'm just kind of make sure and get every growing tip up top here, except there is one area I'm going to leave some growing tips. I'll show you that in a minute. Get every growing tip. I'm actually going to lose some of the, some of the total branches too. This one here, I'm going to leave some growing tips. I'm going to take out these big old leaves and then you might be able to see a little more of what I'm talking about in that it looks almost as if the tree just kind of gave up on this spot here and take out those bigger leaves there and then you can kind of see what I'm talking about. You see here there's a little dead piece and there's another little dead piece and there's some little little branches coming out of there. Almost like it didn't want to didn't want to keep giving that spot any of its energy but you can also see a little tiny aerial root hanging there so I want it to kind of maybe regain some momentum there so that'll be the only place I leave any growing tips. I am going to cut these super long, long pieces off. I'm going to leave those short ones in there. Just, I said, I don't want it to give up on that branch altogether. Ficus will just, sometimes they'll take a branch that just isn't doing the tree any good and just give up on it. And uh, I don't want to give up on that branch. I just want the momentum to go down below. Take most of that piece off there. And of course, these pieces up here, what I'm going to do I'm going to come out a little bit and this was starting to build some ramification, meaning it was getting lots of branching. So I want to, I want to keep some of that. I just want to cut all the growing tips so that the momentum goes down below. And this guy, I might take that one a little bit back further in a minute, but I want to look at it here first and actually and just made a little mistake. That is part of the one I want to leave on the bottom. That's okay. It was kind of coming up there in the wrong spot anyway. That's about all I'm going to do for today. You see, I left a couple of little growing tips on this piece here. But every growing tip up top here I got. This, which I was starting to mistake as being part of the top, is actually coming out of the bottom there. Let's see these little, how small the branches are there. Anyway, I got this, uh, as I end this video, I got this pot from Flea Masters in Fort Myers. If anybody has any interesting stories from Flea Masters, you can uh, leave it in the comments. If anybody ever has anything constructive to say, you can leave that in the comments too. Just don't be a jerk about it. No sense in being a jerk like some bonsai people can be, but... Yeah, Flea Masters. Well, I tell you what, you think you'd find cheap stuff there. Not really even all that cheap. Some of it's more expensive than you can find in a regular store. And the people, man, the people are freaking weird as can be. <clears throat> a little spider web there. I guess that guy must be moving or something. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. My sexy teacher outfit. <laughs> <laughs>